Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast. Happy Wednesday, a gorgeous day here at The Toast because it's hump day. You're halfway through the week. How should we celebrate? Oh, I don't know, maybe by humping someone you love, which I already did today because I woke up with Theo in my arms. Hey, Jax, how you darn? Darn good. I think we should celebrate with another episode of The Toast. I love where your head is at. It's kind of a strategy. It's a crazy idea, but you have to hear me out. I feel like that's what people need to get through to the latter half of the week. I mean, it is what we usually do, and what we usually do, like, is working for us. So I say, stick to the stuff you know. If you want to be cool, follow one simple rule. Don't mess with the flow. No, no. You're 100% right. We should stick to the status quo. Octave change. No, no, no. Such a good song and such a good message. Is it a good message? It's actually oh, yeah. not. <laughs> it's actually such a good point. It's like the worst message. No, the point of the song was like they were trying to get Gabriella to not. To stay in her a, box. Yeah, to stay in her box and like, you know, only hang out with a certain group of people and don't even think about blending. And we love blending. No, and it's like, Martha, you can't pop and lock and jam and break. Like, you must stay in your lane. Yeah, but she should. You Have you seen her jam? Have you seen her break? That's what have she's born to do. Have you seen her TikTok? She's literally dancing around the world. And if she had stuck to the status quo. We would never know dancer Martha. We would only know nerd Martha. Right. So it's, Why do they have to go and name her Martha? Why not? No offense to our Martha Toasters. It's just not... It's not like the most young, fabulous, vibrant name. Depends on the Martha. So true. Stuart. I know a great Martha. So do I. Yeah. You're right. Any, like You're that's right. the thing about names. Like yes, the person becomes the name. The name, but sometimes a name becomes a person, and they just they can't, you know, take back control. Yeah. Well, that's on them. They're out of control. Right. They're personal out of control. accountability. They're spiraling. Personal accountability Get a grip. is so important. Get a grip. So stick to the status quo when it's working and when what right. you're doing is really right. amazing. And that's that, what the title of the song should have been. Stick to the status quo when it's really working and when it's really amazing. I would say that the students, though, the Wildcats would have said like the status quo was working. Mm-hmm. There was peace and harmony in the land. Always playing devil's advocate. But they didn't know how good it could be. Right, right. They were blinded. Yeah. By the quo. By the quo that was status. Can I tell you something I'm like struggling with? You know, new conversation tangent. Sure. So, you know, this weekend is opening night of the Eras tour. And like, I'm struggling with the fact that I'm not going to be there. I'm like, I did think about maybe getting on a flight to Arizona. But like, honestly, I need a break from travel. Um, but like so much content is already coming out on TikTok. Like people are standing outside State Farm Stadium. They are filming because you can hear she has to rehearse. Oh and so they're filming like and, and knowing what songs are on the set list. Like I already know two songs that are on the set list. Like I'm really annoyed. Um, and I don't know how to like preserve my experience because my show, my first show is not going to be until May. Um, so I, I don't know how to like, you know, engage with the Swifty community when they're kind of being toxic right now and like giving spoilers. Where are you seeing the spoilers? TikTok? all over TikTok and the first show hasn't even happened once the first show happens like people are more than welcome to share I'm not going to judge them for that but like do I even want to see that and you can't just like limit your TikTok use until this weekend or are there ways to do filters on TikTok where you can like make sure that you're not seeing anything Taylor Swift Swifty I mean I could limit my TikTok usage I just think it's important to be realistic in a scenario can you do filters on TikTok I know you I don't know if you can block like a hashtag I feel like you could But I've also been getting like really good inspo for like what I should wear. Um, So it's been helpful, but it's also being toxic. I feel like you could figure out what to wear. Yeah, I was actually thinking about the outfit outfit I wore in Lisbon with um, the rainbow. That's like been a lot of people's inspo for the era's tour. I know. I didn't even think about it, but that dress is so lover era. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just something like I'm struggling with. I feel like a lot of Swifties can probably relate to like, want, I want to know. And then it's like, once the show actually happens, like, do I watch all the videos or do I wait for it to be a surprise? I think when I saw Reputation, like I knew everything that was going to happen and it didn't really make a difference in how much fun I had, you know? Yeah, she always makes every show a little special. That's true. I just can't believe it's here. Like we've been talking about this for so long, you know? Yeah. And but I still don't have tickets. It's <laughs> time. Still don't have tickets. Um, don't even have like a lead. But again, I just, I'm not worried, you know? Yeah, what's meant for you will find you. I don't chase, I attract. So 
I hope that brings you peace, Turdy Lou. Thanks, Jacqui. Um, why don't you just make like a quick a celebratory announcement? Congratulate our girl, Jackie O. <sighs> this morning, she reached 300,000 followers on Instagram, which I don't know if like as a society, like we're beyond sharing like the 100,000 milestones, but like, I'll never be over it. Like, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. We're beyond like, you know, balloons with 300 on them and then taking okay, so a picture. I'll just cancel that delivery I had <laughs> tending to your house. Like I'm not going to post something in feed like 300k because every time like someone does that then they dip below. That's always. Yeah no and I do like always roll my eyes. I'm a congrats who cares. But I think we can orally celebrate you know because we it's were huge. talking about it this morning. That's what we do on the show is talk about the things that we're talking about and that's kind of like been big news in our world this morning is that I hit 300k and that I'm just like growing on Instagram. And it, like, it just feels exciting because like when you go to your page, there's a new number. Like I remember when I went from 100 to 200 on TikTok, like I felt different. Do you feel different? No. Oh. Because uh, I like it. Right, right. No, I don't feel different, but it's just, it's nice. And also as I try and grow my business, like it's always good to have more followers. And of so it's good. Business is good. Business is good. You want to know why? Because you're sticking to the status quo. No, I feel like I'm not sticking to the status quo. I, I feel know. like I've been switching it up. Yeah, you have pretty much And I content. feel like actually I have been switching up my content a little bit recently, just being like a little more real, I yeah. would say, because real people are real people. And I they feel like are. I'm attracting new audience. You know, I feel like maybe I tapped out on what I was doing before. Right, no, now you have so much to say, so much to share. So many things I'm learning every day. I'm learning something new every, every day. day. Especially in my driving excursions. Right. And by the way, another tour starting up soon is Luke Combs, which we're definitely going to go to a show or two. Yeah. It's very exciting to be a, a fan of, of good music these days. It is. It's, it's also exciting to be a country music fan when summer comes because there's always good tours. And Festivals. I actually live near like a lot of different venues that I could go to. You do. And so I'm really excited to see Luke Combs, Morgan Wallen, Lady A. There's also a big country music festival down here in April. Tortuga. Tortuga. And so I need to look at the lineup and see if that's worth pursuing. And I just started planning my stagecoach. You know, last year I decided last minute not to go. And I gave all my tickets to Margo, which was so nice of me. Um, I did make her pay for them. <laughs> that was misleading. Um, and I had a lot of regrets. But I had MSG the, the next week. And I just thought it would be irresponsible to be like out partying for four days before like one of the most important nights of my life. And now I'm I'm going, I'm planning to go. I'm very excited. I gotta get my outfits ready. It's gonna be great. I've been to stagecoach in years. Yeah, that's gonna be really fun. I'm sorry, I know it's hard for you to hear. Not really, especially oh. when, let me look at the Tortuga lineup. Yeah, Tortuga is like low-key like a major country festival. I feel like people don't talk about it because it's randomly in Fort Lauderdale, but it's like on the beach and it's really beautiful. And they get like major, major line headliners. Yeah, okay, oh my God. This was last year, I think. Literally the best lineup ever. I don't even want to look at it. What's this year? This year, Eric Church, Shania Twain, Kenny Chesney. Pretty good. Yeah, if I'm looking for a night out with country music, like, it's pretty good. On the beach. Yeah. Good things. Good things. I love festival season for me like I don't like you know Coachella and stuff but country music festivals if you haven't been like I highly recommend even if you don't like country music but you can appreciate it's just a vibe. talent it's just a you vibe. can appreciate good music and and live music <gasps> excuse me you. bust on it oh it's true mm -hmm. um if you appreciate like just talent I think and who doesn't appreciate talent I think you'd, you'd enjoy it it's a great vibe yeah so I'm excited about those things yeah, I'm also excited that it's Wednesday. We have Dear Toasters. We actually have so many good submissions. I was teetering. I almost had four because they were so good, but I'll save the next one. Till oh my one. God, Turdy Lou. Till Turdy Lou's Keep it crazy. in your pants. No, there's one that's like real. I know people are not going to like what I have to say. <gasps> I love that for you. Yeah. Throwing you into the fire. I almost didn't include it because I'm like, oh, let's just give like another thing for people to hate us about. Um, but you know what? Ooh, like, I, love I think it. it'll, I think it'll spark interesting debate, interesting conversation. Obsessed. What's the topic? Please, you're you're just like teasing me now. The topic is the disabled. Yeah, no, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's I don't I don't know how to like summarize the topic in another word other than that. Should we just like do it right now because I don't know if I could wait? 
You know what? I said I have four, so maybe I'll do the other three. Let's just do this one right now, okay? Right? Like, um, Claudia, which is so crazy because we said we were going to stick to the status quo today and we're not. But we're not. But as we also said, amazing things can happen when you break free from the status quo. Okay. We're breaking free, soaring, oh. flying. Toasting. Okay, ready? Hey, Jackson Turd. I'm a longtime listener. Thank you both for getting me through life as a new mom and a nurse. Oh, now that I, I didn't realize, I kind of skimmed through the bio. She's a nurse, so that makes sense why she's having this dilemma. Mm -hmm. Here's the New situation. Okay. My father-in-law passed away last December. Prior to that, he was given a handicap hanger for his car due to his inability to walk long distances. Okay. Fast forward to now, my mother-in-law still uses the handicap sign and parks in handicap parking all the time. It drives me absolutely nuts. She's not a malicious person or ill-intending, but I know that it's wrong. How do I confront the situation? Should I say something at all? She has absolutely no reason other than wanting to park closer to entrances. Please help. I'm just a toaster trying to do the right thing and make the world a better and safer place for all people. So what my initial thought was like, it is unequivocally wrong to use a handicap placard when you don't need one. It's, it's for people who need it. But I don't know, like this woman just lost her husband. Like maybe this is her way of grieving. Those things expire at some point. Like she won't get a new one. Like, I don't know, just like leave her alone. And if her husband just passed away, she's probably not extremely young. Like, right. Even if she's say 50s, 60s, like she wants to park closer to the store, let her... I kind of and I, I kind of I agree with you and um, like you said they do expire so eventually like her her time will run out but it's, if this is like one small silver lining to like what she's been through in the last year is like she gets to take her handicap pass out for a joy ride I, I wouldn't be such a narc yeah she's not like a 16 year old sprightly right. like using her grandfather's that's really fucked up that's messed up yeah I I just feel like this is a situation where I would just like mind my own business. Yeah, I would just like uh, pretend like I didn't notice that. What are you going to do about it? Say something to her? Like, don't be a narc. Come on. She's going no, through I know. a lot. And this woman just like lost her husband. Like, give her the last few months of the parking pass. It'll be up soon. Yeah. And then she'll have to deal with what she's probably avoiding. Yeah. Long walks to the supermarket. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, we've all been tempted, you know, to just pull into that spot, driving around the parking lot for hours and hours. Um... And it's wrong. It's wrong. But I don't know, you know? She's a little old lady. She's alone now. She doesn't have help to carry the groceries to the car. Yeah, I can think of m so many worse people who could abuse that placard. Privilege, and yeah. you know what? A little old lady with her groceries, like, sure, you could park at the front. Yeah, and I will say, I, I don't know because I have, obviously don't have a handicap placard, but I feel like most of the time, I don't know if there's like many, many situations where like a, a, a handicapped person cannot use the spot because someone else is using it. Like whenever I see them, they're always empty. Like people really do respect mm -hmm. the handicap parking spots, which they should. Um, so I don't know. I just feel like, you know, it's okay. Let it go. Yeah, but I know I, I'm going to be called ableist for that. So that's why I was just like talking about hot take. Got it. I don't know. Maybe. I just feel like people are like using the word ableist really fast and loose these days. I feel like we had this conversation a few weeks ago. Like everything can't be ableist, you know? Yeah. Like people on TikTok make these crazy arguments, like such stretches. Like you, like, like literally the most mundane thing. They're like, that's ableist. And it's actually root rooted in misogyny. I'm like, No, oh, but then okay. like shit that's actually ableist. L like literally atrociously vile statements yeah so i'm not ableist i just think it's important to say that but that was like your little your little teaser a little palate cleanser yeah for dear toasters which is at the end of today's episode i just like to like prioritize things that need to be fixed in the world and like the little old lady using the handicap placard after her husband just passed away and it's like this one small win for her is not it for me it. for me for you and for you and this is also a great time to remind you guys, if you're dealing with something, email us, deartoasters at gmail.com. We will always keep your prompts anonymous. And if you're dealing with something, whether it's mother-in-laws, handicap placards, whatever it is, shoot us an email, deartoasters at gmail.com. Okay. And I think with that little with teaser, that. we can get into the stories. Yeah. So without further ado, here are the fast life stories that you need to know. 
And today's episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. You know, as little girls, Jackie and I always stood out, whether it was, you know, Jackie's vibrant hair, my gorgeous singing voice, but it's tough to stand out, especially if you're a business owner and you want to attract the most talented people to hire on your team. ZipRecruiter makes it easy. Right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free when you go to ZipRecruiter.com slash toast. ZipRecruiter helps you stand out to the right candidates. Their technology sends great candidates to your job, and you can send a personal invite to your top choices. ZipRecruiter also makes it easy for candidates to apply to your job. Instead of filling out a lengthy application, they can apply with just one click. To help your job catch the eye of great candidates, ZipRecruiter also offers attention-grabbing labels like remote, training provided, urgent, and more. Get your job noticed by the best and the brightest candidates with ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Jax and I can attest to that. We actually use ZipRecruiter many times over the years to hire for different positions when it comes to building out you know, the Toast team at Toast HQ. See for yourself. Go to our exclusive link, to get uh, to try ZipRecruiter for free, and that's ziprecruiter.com slash toast. Again, that's zip, Z-I-P, recruiter.com slash toast, ziprecruiter.com slash T-O-A-S-T. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Again, whether you have a side hustle, you're looking to grow your business, you're running a company, whatever it is, ZipRecruiter is really the best place to find quality candidates. They make it so easy. I find a lot of the time, like whether you're applying for jobs or looking for people to hire, it's so unnecessarily complicated. And ZipRecruiter is uncomplicating things. Today's episode is also brought to you by Perfect Bar. Looking for a protein bar that actually tastes good? Well, look no further than Perfect Bar. With their lineup of fresh from the fridge protein bars, Perfect Bar is exactly what you've been looking for. No chalky artificial aftertaste here. Made with freshly ground nut butter, organic honey, and 20 organic superfoods, Perfect Bar has a variety of products like protein bars, little snack size bars that are also good and good for you. They have tons of different flavors, whatever your palate is. I'm always reaching for the peanut butter with the dark chocolate and a little bit of a flaky sea salt. So good. I love that they keep in the fridge because then the chocolate gets like nice and hard and it's just like delicious. Um... They're packed, the snack size bars, which are great to just throw in your purse, are packed with up to six grams of proteins and 150 calories. A little goes a long way and you will stay full. They're made with whole food ingredients. They contain no artificial preservatives. That's why they're stored in the fridge, which I think makes a lot of sense. You can grab one after a workout for a quick bite while you're out shopping. You can feel good about what you're snacking on. If you aren't convinced already, they're also non-GMO project verified, gluten-free, soy-free, kosher, and low GI. So Perfect Bar knows that it'll be love at first bite. For a limited time, they're offering you a chance to try their refrigerated protein bars for free. Here's how it works. Sign up for email or texts, upload a picture of your receipt from your local grocery store, and they will reimburse you for the cost of one bar directly into your Venmo or PayPal account. All you have to do is go to perfectsnacks.com slash toast to get a free Perfect Bar today. That's perfectsnacks.com slash toast to get a free Perfect Bar today. Happy snacking. Happy snacking. I love um, helping people get free snacks. That's kind of like the, I feel, my mission on this earth. Your reason de terre. Reason de terre. Okay, our first story, some fashion drama. Zendaya oh. stylist Law Roach says he's retiring due to politics and lies. So Zendaya stylist, who has also styled many a star, but he's most famous for Zendaya because one, she has the best style, and I think they've worked together for the longest in the most events. He's all, he's also known for like specific moments, maybe not clients like Zendaya, but I think he did um, a lot of Ariana Grande's music videos during her iconic music video era. Yeah, he's also dressed Megan The Stallion, Hunter Schaefer, Kerry Washington, Celine Dion, Ari, Priyanka Chopra, Lindsay Lohan, Addison Moore, um, but Zendaya also because she's just like the most fashionable girl on the planet. And here's the man behind it. Anyways, he posted a picture saying, retired, with the caption, my cup is um empty. Thank you to everyone who have supported me in my career over the years. Every person that trusted me with their image, I'm so grateful for you all. If this business was just about the clothes, I would do it for the rest of my life, but unfortunately, it's not. The politics, the lies, and false narratives finally got me. You win, I'm out. This was shocking for a multitude of reasons. One, he's not particularly old and he's not particularly like uh, washed up. Like he's at the top no, of the No, he literally his game. like just was doing Stars of the Vanity Fair Oscars party this weekend. Right. And so many of his clients and just like major, major celebrities were commenting on his posts like, what? No, you can't. So it seemed like it was something nobody knew about. Um, and obviously the internet has flocked to find the reason and, and, and they think they found it. Um, yeah. 
there is this video going around from very recent, I think last week, Paris Fashion Week. He went to the Louis Vuitton show with Zendaya. They both walk out to the front row. The person shows Zendaya her seat and Law doesn't have a seat. And Zendaya points behind her. There's a seat directly behind her in the second row. She's like, oh, that's your seat. And he looks verklempt, flustered, offended, pissed. pissed. So I don't know if that's the whole reason because he said the politics, that could be the seat. The seat is politics, Mm -hmm. the lies and false narratives. But maybe he got that seat because of lies and false narratives that are like circling. I felt two ways about seat gate because on the one hand, like who was the front row for if not the biggest stylists and the biggest stars and the people who can actually- have access. Put their clients in these clothes. Like I feel like so often it's like, influencers or just like random people who aren't buying your clothes who's who's not followers are it whose followers are and it's just it's very and if I was someone who's like a veteran in the industry I would see that and be annoyed like for me as a follower of people I'm like oh I'm glad my person was in the front because I got to see front row view but yeah, from but a when fashion you think about it, it it doesn't make sense it's someone who actually has influence in the fashion world and like can get these dresses on influential people why that person wouldn't be in the front row right like when you think about it those top stylists like are actually the most the influencers of fashion because they're influencing the, the the major players like Zendaya. Yeah, and Zendaya then influences the people. Everyone, the culture. Yeah, so I understood why, of course, like he should be in the front row and that is a bit of a slap in the face, especially if totally. there were people in the front row who aren't A-listers and Anna Wintour. And especially because it seemed like he was told he would be sitting in the front row because he walked to the front with Zendaya. I don't think he would have just assumed that unless he knew. Yeah, but you like in a situation like that when it's like bleachers, like you do walk across the floor and then like go up to your stand. No, I feel like you walk from the back. No, I don't think so. Yeah. You walk from the back? Yeah, like depending on how the room is set up. I've been to like two seated shows and you walk in like from like at the last row and then you walk up to the front. Oh, I've experienced the other way. Unless they're you're walking the from backstage. I don't which is impossible too. Yeah, no, but I think you walk, the, everyone like walks on the floor and like even if the like on the runway sometimes until the show starts just to like get up to their seats. No, like what, when I'm thinking about the layout, I mean, I guess it just depends what the show is. Every show is different, but you would walk in from like the door and you would enter, like the first thing you see would be the last row. Mm. It depends on Whatever. the Whatever, I mean, it depends, yeah. Um, but I, it just, it looked like he was told that he would get a front row seat. That's why he like, you know, No, but also beelined. like, some, Anna Wintour doesn't need to be told that she's going to get a front row seat. True, also very true. And, and I know that he's not Anna Wintour, but like he is one of the most influential people in fashion. It's not like he needs to be promised a front row seat in order to go. Like it should be expected. But on Agreed. the other hand, it's like, it's hard for us to, and lay people in general, to like understand why you get like so offended about a seat you know right like it's the front row politics it's a it's a sign of respect yeah no like if you're not front worked if you're not front you're last a hundred percent and I think it's like all right maybe when you start out even if you're having a ton of success you don't come to expect things like that but when you're like a veteran of this industry and you're at the top of your game and you walk in with Zendaya like you expect a little respect yeah so that definitely would put a bad Could taste be. in his mouth, but not enough to retire from the industry no. as a whole. So there's now, definitely you, more going on. Because if I were him and, and Louis Vuitton disrespected me like that, like, okay, my clients are just not wearing Louis Vuitton ever again. Goodbye. But Zendaya is like a face of Louis Vuitton. So that's the politics. It's like, you hate Louis Vuitton because they disrespected you, but a lot of the top clients you work with are actually faces of Louis Vuitton and have contracts and have to wear. But he could get any new clients that aren't part of Louis Vuitton. Yeah, but like Zendaya, you don't just give up on Zendaya. But um, this can't be the, you know, the one and only reason, of course. It maybe it just was like, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. But it does remind me a lot of Michael Costello. When Michael Costello posted, because for me, like when, when I look at Michael Costello, when I look at Law Roach, like two unequivocal talents, like so good at what they do, um, but both referencing some like petty Hollywood bullshit. Um, and it just reminded me a lot of that. Like so sad how someone both of these people who are so talented and have so much potential kind of being sidelined. What happened in the Michael Costello situation that reminds you of this? Like he posted um, that like he basically was like blacklisted from 
And it, and it made sense to us because we were like, he's so talented. His dresses are so beautiful. And he never really got to a level got past that involved. he should. Right. And he said, literally, I've been blacklisted in this industry by certain people. He mentioned Chrissy Teigen. Yeah. Um, but just like how the, it's not even about how talented you are. It's about like the connections, the hot, the swing in, you know, who you're with. And, and it should be like a meritocracy, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what this is. I really hope that we get more info. I also feel like he's, there's no way he's actually retiring. I was going to say, do you think this is like a a legitimate retiring? No, or, I think it's no, a little I'm, dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's, he's the top of his game. Everyone wants to work with him. If you look back in the last 10 years of like the most iconic looks in pop culture, he's been responsible for a lot of them. So I don't think you give up something like that. But it's easy to get frustrated when, when again, you're not being seen for your talent. It's a cacophony of other really irrelevant factors. Yeah. And as he said, like he loves fashion. If it was just about the clothes, he would do it forever. And so I don't think he's literally going to spend the rest of his life like not doing this thing that he loves. Maybe he will pivot into doing it in a way that he doesn't have to deal with all this shit, whether that's like doing his own line or I know he's also a judge on an HBO Max show yeah all those things to me sound even more political but yeah Hollywood what do I know um but like you know front row politics is extreme the comment section on his Instagram is worth scrolling through it's crazy like the stars were shooketh yeah yeah I saw um, some of them Addison commented Lisa Rinna commented and it wasn't like, oh, you've done Naomi amazing Campbell. work. Oh, yeah. Naomi was like, no, we will not let you. So it wasn't like everyone, oh, we'll miss you. You did amazing work. Bye. It was like, no, what? Yeah, I don't think they're going to let him quit. I don't think that he should quit, even though he didn't say quit. He said retired. Right. But um, whoever offended him. Has some explaining to do. Yeah, are in trouble. Yeah, in trouble. Yeah. Do you think like he's beefing with Zendaya? No, because just he could just video? drop her as a client. Yeah. And he could give all those looks to someone else. Right. She really is like the it girl of fashion. And if like, and if he really has beef with her, like he could find whoever, and he probably spends a lot of time with her. He probably knows whoever her like, whoever she's always competing with. I don't even know who mm -hmm. that would be. Give right. them all the looks. So true. I don't think you know it's Zendaya could, because she also you know just seems really nice. Use a new stylist and is not a competitor, but like similar. Sydney Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney like her looks are always aging her she's always looking matronly I know she has a partnership with Tori Burch and I just don't think it's like a good match for her um so if he wanted to get back even though like Zendaya is so much bigger than Sydney Sweeney but they're both on euphoria and Sydney Sweeney is gonna have a very long career ahead of her um he could he could go to her because she's yeah. in dire dire straits she's in dire need yeah it's also interesting like to me he seems like the number one stylist in Hollywood but then some of his clients it's like oh how'd you get to work with him like yeah maybe he's really loyal and like people who worked with him when he wasn't the biggest he stuck by people who stuck by him yeah like he did Haley like Steinfeld for Vanity Fair I actually didn't really like what she wore <laughs> um he looked I just didn't like the length of the dress. The dress is really, really beautiful. But like for me, I'm a gown or a mini girl like that in between. I know it's very high fashion, like teacup, like right above the ankle. I don't like that personally, but I know I could be wrong. I'm obviously, you know, I'm wearing the same pants for the fifth day in a row. What the fuck do I know? Oh, I think I see it. Uh, no, this is 2020. Wow. It's like a silver dress that like really cuts her off like before her heels. I hate that. Is it this one? I can't see what you're showing me. It says 2020. There's no way. Whatever, that's irrelevant. But um, Haley Steinfeld is still like really major. She's been like quiet for a few years, but she has like a huge global following. It's like kind of crazy. What is she major doing right now? Would you? In her no, I just said not right now. I'm just saying in general. She's like an Oscar nominated actress. She's a pop star. She was like the lead in you know Pitch Perfect. She's major. I would say she's major. Okay, the dress goes all the way down to the floor. Not what I saw it. It was and above the she's ankles. wearing a coat with it. It's fashion for sure. I know. And that's that's one thing about me. Like I will critique everyone and everything. Meanwhile, like I'm a slob who knows nothing. I think that's important. I'm crying because her dress is down to the floor covering her heels. Next story. Lindsay Lohan is pregnant, expecting her first baby with Bader Shamus. Lindsay is pregnant and expecting, expecting her first husband first baby with her husband Bader Shamus her rep says she's feeling great and she's thrilled she shared the news via Instagram on Tuesday with a photo of a baby bodysuit that said coming soon on it 
And then her rep confirmed that she is pregnant and they're expecting a baby. So welcome to the pregnancy bunch. This is a great oh, yeah. one for the yeah. crew. Huge for the community. I literally forgot she was like married. Is she married? Yeah. I totally forgot. They've been married for a while now. Like she's really very low key. Settled. Settled and you know, married, chill, pregnant, like very traditional. Yeah. I didn't see that for her. And by the way, the comments were so nice. Like Lacey Chabert, Gretchen Wieners, Paris Hilton. Oh, all the uh, parent trap queens. Like it was actually really nice to see all the people who still wish Lindsay well. I feel like everyone who has worked with her like really roots for her, which is so nice to see. But I also feel like in the last few years, I feel like we still like kind of write Lindsay off as like, Yes. Who knows what she's doing? She's, you know, she's Lindsay. She's Lindsay, but she's been like working recently and going to like doing interviews and red carpets and and she's very just like uh, for lack of a better word like normal in the yeah. sense that like she's just working in Hollywood right now and and being a wife and and a future mom and like going about her business not doing what she was doing before which was you know like running around the globe and instagram living yeah and the club in mykonos yeah oh right you know like she's just settled down now and i feel like yeah. she's been doing it for at least a year or two she was in that netflix christmas movie and like mm -hmm. it's really sticking yeah no i feel like she's in a good place there was like a rough couple of years mm -hmm. um but she seems really happy. I'm so glad she's pregnant. I think that's so cute. And it's at the same time as Paris, which is just like so crazy, you know? Like all the girls are growing up. All the girls are growing up. I watched an, a clip of an interview that she did recently, Lindsay, and like I was just struck by how sober she sounded, not in like mm -hmm. in a actual drunk. drunk sort of way, but just in like a lucid. Yeah, like she's just had so many eras of her career that you just expect her to be one thing at this point. But then when you actually hear her speak, it's like, oh, she's just same old Lindsay. Yeah, I agree. It's nice. I'm really happy for her. Yeah, I'm really happy for her. And I'm excited. And Dina's becoming a grandma. I'm excited for the pregnancy content. Yeah. And the look. She needs like a she needs like a big cover, you know? Yeah, we need like a Lindsay explainer in order yeah. for this era to feel really relevant. Yeah. Like she's back and she's been back. So like why isn't anyone reintroducing her? Right. She needs like a Vogue cover. And like honestly being pregnant would be so beautiful. Like she needs like this, like a reintroductory, reintroduction to society. Or a book or a documentary. Yeah, but I also feel like doing a book and a documentary is like really traumatizing when you have like so much trauma. And I feel like maybe she's just at a good place and doesn't want to relive it, which I totally understand too. Yeah, but some sort of sit down, like where we're just turning over a new leaf. Yeah, I would love to hear her talk about like, all the times she was interviewed like because now those clips go so viral like old interviews where people were so rude and dismissive and misogynistic about like the place she was in and like she's really kind of become kind of like Britney like um an example of like how the media really destroyed all these young women's lives and I would love to hear her talk about that so maybe yeah. she's like hesitant well she's of, definitely burned by the media so I understand right. why she's not desperate to like ro go run and do a cover or like sit down with Oprah because even like some of the questions Oprah asked her have come back and been like question mark yeah she needs a podcast 100% Living Lohan she needs two. or she needs like some very open loving sisterly hosts trusted sources who would let her speak her truth and we don't edit we don't edit we don't edit unless you unless you would ask us to of course, I would do anything for Lindsay. Do you feel like a kinship to Lindsay, like redheaded queens? Well, she left the tribe for many years. So yeah, but like when we were younger, like you were literally the quintessential redhead, and so was she, and she was like our idol. And she was a really good redhead role model for a while. Yeah, like she always like had good like redhead hair and makeup, and like made really redheads like seem so beautiful. And so yeah, I do. But then I feel like. I forgot how I felt about her when I was like younger because now I just think of her as like when she was blonde and when she was brunette yeah. and she was she was so she was not red for so many years that I kind of forget she's a redhead. What do you think is Lindsay's most underrated film? Hmm. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. I know yeah, you're going like to say Georgia under Rule. 
Oh, no. Oh, my God. I forgot. I was going to say Herbie Fully Loaded. Oh, not the most underrated, but she's so good in everything. Like, if you watch Herbie Fully Loaded, it's like a dumb Disney movie, whatever. Yep. Like, she's really so good, and she's so committed to that car. No, she's so committed to the car. <laughs> she's really, I feel like. And she's literally, like, acting with the car. It's like when she did Parent Trap, she was acting with no With herself. One and then herself. Like, I think people really forget. Like, she's such a talented actress. Like, that's why she blew up when she did. She is a star. She has real talent. No, she really does. And even when she comes back and does movies, like, she's a really great actress. She was didn't just, like, blow up because she's a celebrity and we're just, and like, she was cute. care about, like, the tabloids. Like, she's an amazing actress. Mean Girls, obviously. Freaky Friday. Just My Confessions Luck. Of <gasps> just My Luck. Life Size. Oh my God, Eve's great, no matter where she goes. She's an amazing actress. That's why, like, whenever she wants to come back to the world of acting, like, she'll be great. It's yeah, in we her. Welcome her back. She's very talented. Thank you for bringing up Georgia Roll. An, any excuse to talk about that film. And if you ever want to know why Rotten Tomatoes is literally a not trusted source and you should never make any decisions based on Rotten Tomato, all you need to do is look up the scores for The Lobster and Georgia Rule. One of them has like an 100 and one of them has a 30 and one of them sucks and one of them doesn't. And it's not what you think. Yeah, Georgia Rule really was so good. Oh, such a good movie. Lynette Scabo, Jane Fonda, Garrett, Garrett Hedlund. Hedlund Who's the older man? The guy. The guy, Jackie. Wait, Dermot Mulroney. Yeah, who is like everything to everyone. Yeah, oh, and then there's an older man Right, for Jane Fonda. And who's that? Carrie Elwes, which you wouldn't recognize the name, but he was just in that Christmas movie with Brooke Shields that we watched. The Scottish Ooh, Castle. Such a bad movie. Like, <laughs> yeah. next level bad. It but wasn't so great. Good. It was so good. It wasn't great. No, it was it was big budget, you know, Netflix Christmas movie, which is is good. But Brooke Shields should really be ashamed of herself. Like, that was that was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, that's a great segue into our next story, which is getting a bump up. Okay. Because Nancy Myers' $130 million oh. rom-com is no longer moving forward at Netflix, and the project is looking at new buyers. So a lot of industry info here. Netflix has pulled the plug on Nancy Myers' next movie, a star-studded romantic comedy that would have marked the director's first film in years over budget concerns. But don't cry into your cashmere sweater just yet, Turdy Lou. Uh. Sources with knowledge of the project said the filmmaker is looking into other options to make the movie. Prior to the film, reportedly titled Paris Paramount, being shelved, Scarlett Johansson... Wait, what's the title? Paris Paramount. Not great. Uh, yeah, Scarlett Johansson, Penelope Cruz, Owen Wilson, and Michael Fassbender were being courted for lead roles. Pending talent availability, the project will be shopped to prospective buyers as a package, one source added. So Netflix announced a rom-com in April 2022 and greenlit a price tag well over $100 million, a source confirmed to Variety. Nancy wanted $150 million to produce the film, but Netflix wouldn't go over one hundred and thirty. million. It's not clear how much of the budget is set aside for Nancy's paycheck versus, you know, um. like the kitchens yeah um the kitchens she was set to write direct and produce this movie which is semi-autobiographical it's a story about hollywood exes who end up working together she was married to director charles shire with whom she had two children for nearly 20 years as a couple they worked on several award-winning comedies such as private benjamin baby boom and father of the bride baby boom is so fucking good yeah so then i guess they split and they wound up working together again. She hasn't done a fully Nancy picture since The Intern, but she did produce Home Again, which was written and directed by her daughter, I just learned. Oh, that's sweet. Home Again wasn't her best. And there was- It wasn't hers, technically. There were predatory undertones to the whole thing. Um, it was weird. <sighs> it's weird. It wasn't good. Honestly, I'm just, I feel like Netflix spends so much money on so much crap and even if this movie was not good, people would watch it anyway because it's Nancy Myers and she has such a cult following and I feel like this is a huge mistake. When I first saw the headline, it made it seem like the movie was never gonna, you know, see the light of day. It just It's just not gonna be at Netflix, but somebody's gonna buy this. Yeah. Someone will buy this. People will watch this. She's really never flopped when it's her stamp on everything and this mm -hmm. would be a situation where it's a completely Nancy production. I don't know who wouldn't chomp at the bit over this. What do you think... 
is Nancy Myers' best movie. Okay, let me pull up her catalog because I just want to make sure I'm considering all options. And I just want to say one of the biggest mysteries of this world is the fact that Because I Said So is not a Nancy Myers movie. It's so Nancy Myers. It's Fancy Fires. With Diane Keaton and Mandy Moore. I always feel like it's a Nancy Myers movie and it's like low-key not. Yeah, The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan is a Nancy Myers movie, which is... Oh my God, maybe Nancy could revitalize Lindsay's Lindsay. acting career. 100%. I love The Intern. I think it's like an amazing, amazing movie with an amazing message. Me too, but it doesn't give me quintessential Nancy, you know, coastal grandmother vibe. No, I think her best is The Holiday. Ooh, yeah. Read them all one more time before I make my selection. The Intern, it's complicated. That one you love. That I love that movie. The Holiday, Something's Gotta Give. You love, oh, that's sorry. it. Sorry, so, Something's Gotta Give is my favorite. Father of the Bride, part one, part two, part three is coming. No, 2020 came out. Missed oh. it. Um, Baby Boom. Baby Boom is so good. Private Benjamin, Irreconcilable Differences, she worked on. I Love Trouble. So what did you select? The holiday. The holiday. I'm going to go something's got to give, but the holiday and it's complicated are close seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I like I that for you. I want to live in a Nancy Myers film. Like everyone just has money and they don't ever seem to be worrying about money. They all have great style. The perfect linen pants, like, uh, you know, always. She should come out with a homeware line. Yeah, but like she's so rich, like she doesn't need it, you know? No, she doesn't need it, but it, it could be like, you know, community service for her to like give it would be to helpful. the community yeah. and that people could live in these homes. It would be good for people to live in such relaxing ambiance environments. environments. She also recently had her home photographed for um, Architectural Digest and people were quaking because it's like finally inside. And it was, it was so Nancy. It was so stunning. Yeah. Peak Ugh, Nancy. Gotta be Nancy. Peak Nancy. Yeah. So good. Damn, well, hopefully that movie gets picked up shortly, gets made quickly, but not too quick. You know, don't compromise because I'm looking yeah. forward to watching it. And I Me like too. the cast options. Yeah, I don't love Owen Wilson in like a serious role. But it's not like, serious. It's like they're rom-coms. That's not serious. No, no, no. Like, it, I'm sorry. Let me, let me rephrase. I don't love seeing Owen Wilson as like the heartthrob. The leading you know, man. To me, and when he was in Midnight in Paris, which is literally like a Scor Scorsese? Nope, the other one. The other one? With the glasses. Spielberg? No, glasses. Glasses is Scorsese. No, 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 glasses. What's his name? Claude, he's like the one. He's, you know, he's, the rain in New York City no. with Selena. Oh, Woody oh, Allen. Oh, Woody Allen, yeah. <laughs> I, I did not feel like he was right for that. Like, I don't see him in this, like, Prince Charming kind of way. Like, I really see him as, like, the internship, wedding crushes. The clown. Like, but Class clown. Funny, clown. I'm sorry, I do. So, I don't, I don't, I actually don't love that selection. I love Penelope Cruz. Who was the other woman? Scarlett Johansson. Wonderful. Literally would take a bullet for her. And then who was the other Michael man? Michael Fassbender. Oh, stunning, like, older Silver Fox. That's what she's great at. Like, Silver Fox, like... She can even, in a weird way, she can make anyone attractive. Like, I do not, in the slightest, find Alec Baldwin even remotely attractive. But, like, in that film, I was like, yeah, it's complicated. It Alec is complicated. It. Yeah, go Jake. Go Jake. Yeah, I just wanted to say I disagree about Owen Wilson. I think okay. there's something really affable and, like, lovable about him. And he's, like, I think he's a cutie. And he could be my leading man. Because I like that he's, like, silly. Affable is a good word. I'm more of a Luke Wilson girl, and I feel like nobody even thinks ever to put about him in. Luke Wilson. Yeah. He would be they're, great for this. They're always thinking about Owen, and I'm thinking about Luke. But they think about Luke sometimes. Like, he's in Legally Blonde. Is there a but better role? Jackie, that's literally all he's in. No, Claude, you just don't notice him when he's in stuff because he really becomes the character, you know? Mm, yeah. Here, let's, let's do his movies. Mm. I'm telling you, he doesn't got like a great, he's underappreciated. And I think it's because of his brother. You think that Owen is the superior Wilson? In terms of fame? Yeah. I think it's not even comparable. I wonder why, because Luke is more handsome. So I guess like really looks don't win. No, I think um, 
yeah, when you take a look at their like, you know, resumes, it's not even, we always, you know, reference Owen Wilson as Emmett from Legally Blonde. But beyond that, like I could not name a single role. And Owen Wilson has like a few key movies that are blockbusters, blockbusters. And that's the Wedding Crashers. That's the internship. That's Midnight in Paris. Like he has a lot of like major, whereas like I couldn't name anything other than Legally Blonde for Owen Wilson. I don't think they're even remotely comparable. No, but he is also in like the Royal Ten Mounds, Anchorman, Family Stone, like a bunch of other stuff. But to me, oh, those he movies was in the Family Stone. To me, those movies don't measure up. No, to Family Stone, Wedding really Crashers. Good, no, no, yeah. Like the Family Stone's like an indie like Christmas movie. Like not everyone's seen it. Right. Same with Royal Ten Mounds, but that's probably like one of his most famous roles. Yes, and I haven't seen it, but it's like on my list of things to do before I die. Yeah, I feel like you would not like it. Oh, really? Because it's just like... Is Gwyneth in it? Gwyneth is in it, which is a yeah. plus. Yeah. But it's it's very like artsy. Oh. But, but it, comedy, but it, not in a slapstick sort of way. Mm, okay. I, I, I plan on seeing it at I some mean, time You should life. watch it because I'd be so curious to hear your thoughts. It's like you would okay. want to like it because the concept is a good one. But like, I just don't think you would like the way that it's rolls out because it reminds me of and I don't know if it is Wes Anderson oh that's like not my vibe yeah is this Wes Anderson yeah it is <laughs> oh all right well I guess that so, makes sense why it's the vibe and why it's not your vibe right no I'm not a Wes Anderson girl like not in the slightest no but the the like the poster for each movie I'm like oh I would love this movie the the Grand with Budapest the hotel, hotel couldn't make it through five minutes stunning Midnight Kingdom one- I saw one Wes Anderson movie and it was one of the worst experiences of my life. I went to the movies in college with my friend Abe and he's like really like artsy and like into shit like that. And I just was nonstop rolling my eyes. It was something about like kids going camping. Moon and there was, like, a Kingdom. Moon. Horrible. Agreed. Horrible. Uh, Agreed. Like so bad. But people love him. No. And that's what's so fabulous about art and culture is there's something for everyone. The key word used to describe Wes Anderson's style is formalism. That, that's literally not a word. Not a word and definitely not something that's going to pique my curiosity. No, no. That's not even a word. So maybe just you don't need to see Royal Tenenbaums. Okay. But you should because it's good But cast. like anything with Gwyneth, like I will like. I agree. She's I also just need fun. to see Shakespeare it's such in big, Love. It's such a big cast. I don't know if you get enough Gwyneth. Yeah, I need to see Shakespeare in Love. I've actually never seen that. And that's her Oscar winning role. Yeah. Look at you, Shakespeare. I'm so literary. Like, Turdy Lou Shakespeare. William Turdy Lou. <laughs> Speaking of names, are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Nikki and Brie Bella are leaving WWE and announcing a name change for their next chapter. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. Nikki and Brie Bella have announced their retirement from WWE as well as a major name change. The twin sisters announced a decision Tuesday telling fans they will now be known by their birth surnames Nikki and Brie Garcia or the Garcia twins. They said on the Nikki and Brie show on Sirius XM, today we are officially from here on out the Garcia twins, Brie and Nikki Garcia. We're going to be 40 in November. We're mothers, we're entrepreneurs, we're executive producers. We're starring now, we're hosting shows. The twins explain that when their contract with WWE came to an end, the pair just knew it was time to head into this next direction, next chapter. They said, I just, uh, Brie said, I just want to thank Brie Bella, the character, the name, all of it I have been in the last 16, 17 years. I'm so excited to close that chapter on Brie Bella. Put that book to the side and open up a new one and see what Brie Garcia is going to do next. It never occurred to me that that wasn't their name. Like, even though when I think about it, like, yeah, everyone has like stage names on WWE. Like, Brie's husband is Daniel Bryanson, but he's Brian Danielson. You know, like they switched his name. Yeah. Like, I get it. Um, I just didn't, ever expect that Brie Bella and Nikki Bella wasn't their names because I've just become so accustomed to that right and that's also become their brand like they had a show the Bella sisters like right you know they're the Bella twins yeah and they've lead into the Bella twins and so I understand like you know this differentiation like I want to be Miley Cyrus not Hannah Montana anymore but they've spent so many years like branding money time effort into like the Bella brand it's really Mm -hmm. hard to do a rebrand I know. And you know what this reminds me of? Do you like know at all what I'm going to say? Let me think. 
Uh, like somebody who's like a really established brand just saying like, I want to change my name. Somebody who has a really established It happened like somewhat recently and we were like, what? And then the person like never really enforced the change, but like they legally changed it. Yeah, yeah. Kelly Clarkson. It's, yes. Who did she change it to? Like Kelly Brienne or something. Kelly like Brienne Kelly Brienne. Kelly yeah. Brienne of Tarth. Right. It was like so fucking random. <laughs> I and do we were like, no, but like that's a great example because I do hope that this is like that where in a year we're going to be like remember when they said they're the Garcias but we're still they're still the Bellas like in entertainment when it's when you're so famous and like your name is your brand especially with them because they're not just individuals they're like this brand this team of twins the Bella twins it is so hard to get people to change I feel like even when people get married people did not say Kim Kardashian West for a really long time and once we got comfortable she changed it back like yeah it's really hard to be famous and to have a name change I feel like someone who's famous who actually had a really seamless name change was when Claudia Asher went from Claudia to Turdy Lou like it happened yeah, in days but that's because like Claudia was really never Claudia she was like always turning Lou and people never really felt comfortable calling her Claudia so they were just like waiting for when she dropped the new name I thought you were like actually gonna say like a good example because a good example I think of and it's because I really felt like this was the way her name was meant to be is Sheena Shea like that's not that's not her name when we met her she was Sheena Marie yeah but and her name was she, always she, meant to be Sheena Marie Shea but she's not Sheena Shea anymore yeah, she is. She is, but is she not? isn't that Shay's name? Yeah, but she was married and hold on. And now she's I, married again. Oh, she's married again. Wait, you're totally right. What is Sheena's last name? No, there are actually a lot of influence. Yes, Sheena Shay is literally on her Instagram. Sheena Shay. That's oh, so same. Nice. Lauren Lane. Lauren Lane. No, but even. What so is her real but name? Now. Right, no, she's Lauren Lane. So many people that I follow on Instagram, like, I find it actually oddly easy to switch to their married names. Like even I was looking at Jojo Fletcher and I just think of her as like Jojo Rogers just because I'm always like mm. Jordan, Jojo, Jordan. And then I was thinking, what is her maiden name? Oh, I don't follow her. So she's always Jojo Fletcher to me. But yeah. yes, when you follow someone and they change their name, like even Dana, you're the redhead. Mm -hmm. She's like always, always, always been Dana Holes. Like that's Dana Holes, Dana Holes, Dana Holes. And the day she got married, literally, I think she went to the bathroom after the ceremony and changed her Instagram name. Everything Dana down to her Venmo. She made a new Gmail. I thought that was crazy. Um, and I was like, damn, she's always Dana Holes. And now she's really Dana Webman. Yeah, it's, it can be done for a married name. This is a little different. One, because like we have so many years of the Bellas. They're the Bella sisters. And it really like, it's an entertainment name. You know why they chose it for WWE. Like it's yeah, just it's fun cute. and it's like yeah. very. Bella. Bella. Yeah. Bella. It's global. It's global. It's Twilight. It's Beauty and the Beast. Like it's everything. Oh totally random speaking of Bella I started my book for book club which I told you about it's One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle the way she is painting Positano I'm going like that's on my list I'm going in the summer I you think should maybe, like your maternity leave like maybe I'll take a week and go like oh I have to go to Positano before I die you do and I feel like even just looking at pictures you it's would feel so, that way even though like she does also describe like the way the city is built it's like it's a like lot of stairs Italy yeah um and there's like not a lot of cars but i'll figure it out i like i'm holding myself accountable i'm saying i'm going to positano yeah the thing about positano though i think is like once you're there there's so many other great places around then it turns Capri. into it turns into like this big euro trip euro trip and then that's like a lot to wrap your head around I know, but I feel like I would be okay just seeing one. And like, I would do a day trip to Capri. It's like, if I could take a car, sure. But like trains, planes, boat? automobiles. Boat, I would love, 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 love. Yeah, I think you could do it by boat. And in the book, the girl went in June and she was like, it's so much better because it's really hot, but like it's before tourist season. So I'm just, I, I might be gone for a week, you guys. I, I have to experience one Italian summer. That's totally fine. Yeah, go in July or August. The weather is really like at its peak. That's why it's tourist season. Right. Now I'm going. Yeah. Send me your Rex. <laughs> You should go. <laughs> no, I'm going to go. Like, this is my year of yes, and I'm doing it. Good. I love that for you. Thank you. Um, who are you going to go with? What are we talking about? Who are you going to go with? Uh, ben. Oh, just the two of you? Yeah. Who else? I don't you know. Like, a, a swirly trip. I will be so, God willing, so pregnant. You can waddle down those steps. You'll be fine. No, I can't go international. So maybe we oh, do right. have to go in June. <laughs> Maybe we do have to go in June. If we go in June, you'll come. No, yeah, I think it's I think it's like a romantic place too. Like, oh, so you and Ben, that's really sweet. I know. You don't want to be like, but it's also like a lit 
place and a lit time of year. I it's know. like so you don't want to be with like your crew of like I know of party girls. Yeah, I do feel like when you go on a lit trip. Like it kind of ruins the experience in the sense that like you're hungover, you sleep all day. Like you really don't get to experience like the place you're in if you're like partying all night. Like yes, a couple nights for sure. But like, I don't know. That's how you felt about Lisbon? Yeah, in Lisbon, like I really could have done so much more sightseeing if I wasn't violently hungover sleeping through the whole day. Yeah. So I think I would want to take a sober trip. Maybe Maybe it'll be my birthday gift to myself. I'm literally loving this for you. And also I feel like positive. Didn't Olivia go? Not to, she went to Lake Como. Also um, gorgeous. Also gorgeous. Like I feel that's what happens. It's like there's all these gorgeous right. places, and all of a sudden you're on a Euro trip and you're on the yeah. train. I need a travel agent. I can't like. I feel like it's so hard. Yeah, I feel like now you'll get inundated with travel yeah. agents. No, I need like luxury travel agent who wants to help me. And like I never answer emails, but like I'm really great to work with. Yeah, but you have to know Turdy Lou. Know thy Turdy. Know thy Turdy. Like we like big rooms big portions big air conditioners yeah in the book she's saying like there's no air conditioning anywhere and she's like so hot the whole time and she's like a a young healthy girl you know darn 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 i know something I'm, i've just been struggling with <laughs> back to the bella do twins. you like the book i do you know i i I like have been this is my second Rebecca Searle book and like I love the way she writes and she's Jewish and like you could just tell and this book honestly if you've lost your mom I wouldn't read this book it's so triggering like it just really like highlights like how important moms are and like how no no matter how old you get like you love your mom and you're so lost without your mom and honestly like I find myself getting emotional about it and I feel like if you lose have lost your mom like it will destroy you honestly like I feel that way so that would be my trigger warning Oh, wow. But like Rebecca Searle's thing is magical realism. And it's like both of the books that I've read, the thing that I hate about the book is the magical realism. Yeah, but the book doesn't exist without it. I didn't realize there was a little bit in this one. Yeah. The first one isn't so magical. No, it's not. Realistic. It could be explained away. This one can't. Yeah. I'm not into magical realism. Like I'm, I live life in reality. I can do a little. I don't like it. I can do it sometimes. That was like that book you recommended to me that I fucking hated. But the girl who like burst into pieces. Uh, the Unfortunate the, Importance of Beauty. The Unfortunate Importance of Beauty. Amazing book. So hated. good. But you liked Magical Realism with nothing to see here. I did. But that was because it was like funny. Yeah. Unfortunate yeah. Importance was so funny. So bad. I might have to read it again. So good. Was that our fourth or fifth story? Fourth. Oh. Are you ready for our fifth? I am because we also got to do Dear Toasters. Right, right, right. Tom Schwartz was spotted filming Winter House season three amid scandal. Oh, man. Yeah, I thought this was interesting. Tom Schwartz was spotted filming Winter House season three in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, despite being in hot water for allegedly having prior knowledge of Tom Sandoval's affair. I don't think he's in hot water over that. I think it's just like this. You made your bed with Tom Sandoval, so you're part of Scandival. But You are you are who you li- like associate with. Yeah, and I just don't think that I think he probably knew about it for the last few weeks, but I don't think he's known for seven months and the me Raquel neither. thing with him was a cover. Not at all. No, me neither. I don't know what his real options were when he found out other than to be loyal to his friends. Right. So and I, he's I'm like, not mad at him for that. He's not a man with a backbone. He's not the one no. who's going to like blow it up and be like, do the right thing. I'm not mad at him for that. I'm not mad at him for anything in particular. I just think he's the worst. Yeah. Agreed. And now it's like everything else that he's done that was like borderline over the last few years. It all. And because of how much he allowed Tom, San- Tom Sandoval to influence and ruin his life. It's like, you're a fucking moron and schmuck and you so lay true. with dogs and you get fleas, motherfucker. Right, like, this is who you put your whole stock in. Yeah, and look, good. Look at who he is. Good. Yeah. Good, because it's the, way, the one you got. Also, from our conversation yesterday about Summer House, I'm like now thinking, like, I feel like Winter House is even more unnecessary. Like, when Summer House was like, popping off with like so much drama so many couples like yeah give us winter house but now like summer house is like barely hanging on like being half decent i really don't feel like they need winter house yeah also winter house was born out of covid when they needed show ideas right. and they like couldn't film and so it's just like get these people quarantined in a house and film something 100 percent. but they made it a little more interesting because it's cast members from all different bravo shows so like now you have tom schwartz sandoval was supposed to be on the show before scandoval why um, would he be on the show though He's old and like married at what well, he was. Cause like the, sh- the, you know, they put so much stock the in Tom shtick. Tom. No, and, like, I get in it. The Toms and like Bravo, you, people love but Tom them. Schwartz is another Kyle, like an older Tom Sandoval. T- 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 Sandoval, so sorry, excuse me, is another Kyle, like a 
someone who's too old, who's taken, doesn't really contribute to like the young party licious vibe. Yeah, well, I remember a year or two ago, they wanted Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz to go on Winter House. And it was like, Tom Schwartz is married. Like, right. And they want to go without their wives. Like, what? So weird. So weird. But now, Tom Schwartz is single. He's been single for maybe a year at this point. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I'm fine with him going on Winter House. And because he has all this drama going on, like, it's it's a pretty good call. Also, Brian Benny yeah. from Family Karma is going to be on it. As well as, oh. um, they were spotted having a meal at Timber and Torch. It was Schwartz, Brian, and a former Winter House cast member, Corey Kiefer. And then it was also stated that Kyle and Danielle were there having lunch with them too. Mm. So it's going to be the old crew. But then what I found interesting is Southern Charm is currently filming, which means Austin and Craig probably can't go. Uh huh. Is Paige going to go without Craig? That sounds miserable. It sounds miserable, but people love Paige. I think, yeah, she'll be there. Yeah. You know, she's been very quiet this season, her and Sierra. Yeah, they ha- they have been, but like they're just like doing their girly thing. Yeah. So I feel like Winter House could be good as like this like amalgamation of Bravo stars, but they've got to Ma- be single. Hodgepodge. They gotta they've got to be single. I mean, what honestly, Ashley Schwartz, Darby like- should go. Ashley Darby. Oh my god! Yeah. I know, like the Real Housewives are like kind of like the older generation, and these are like the younger no, shows. No, Kyle's like, forty. Ka- Kyle's forty, and Ashley Darby's like young. Yeah. She should go and she's single and she already dated Luke. Yeah, I feel like Tom Schwartz, except now he's kind of tainted, but before that, like I feel like he could have met someone on, like him and that girl, um, Sammy. Yeah, she's so cute, Sam. They could have been cute. Yeah. Who said they wanted to go out with Tom Schwartz? Taylor. Taylor. But they're filming Southern Sheps. Charm. They're filming Southern Charm. And did you hear the report that, um, the rumor that Austin hooked up with Taylor Shep's ex? I saw it not looking very credible, but when yeah. I think about it, I I could see it. I'm kind of here for it. There were such good friends on the show. I feel like it would have happened in a natural way. Like Austin was always really there for her. She's such a sweet girl. Shep was, was so, so bad so to terrible. Her. And so terrible. she deserves true love. And Austin's always looking for a relationship. And like, maybe this is the one for him. I would ship as long as they went about it in a kosher manner, which we know that they did. The way I'm like still holding out hope for Austin and Chelsea. Oh my God, Chelsea is like so moved on. No, I know, but like they were perfect for each other. But what's so crazy is you think of Austin and like all these girls and that's my issue with Austin is like whenever he's with someone, he acts like they're his wife and like Sierra. he's so committed. No, uh, Madison LaCroix. Oh yeah. They I were mean, literally like fella. living together and now it's like done and dusted. Same with Chelsea and now like Sierra and Lindsay or whatever. And that's why I kind of don't want Taylor to get involved with him, but like eventually he has to settle down. Yeah. You would think. But he like weirdly likes being settled in a relationship, but like doesn't want to get married. I don't get it. Right, right. Right. What was the story? Tom Schwartz going on Winter House. Cute. Yeah. Cute. I'm still probably not going to watch because I feel like if I'm not watching Summer House, well, I actually am watching Summer House, but like it's just a lot. I agree. And if Paige and Craig aren't on it together, no thank you. Agreed. Um, Because that's really like the only thing place we get them together all the time I know and they're really great together so not for me but I hope he you know makes an interesting relationship happen for himself something something um well those were the fast five you definitely needed to know all of them um and we're not done yet because it's Wednesday where we do our advice segment called Dear Toasters you guys write into us and Jax and I do our best to give our you know most toxic advice no so it's not toxic it's not, I mean, it's all about perspective. It's tough love. It's tough love. Um, so, Dear Toasters is brought to you by Vegamore. We have tried everything to get silky, strong, healthy hair. When we say everything, we mean everything. We used to sleep with like olive oil in our hair. So if you are tired of those ineffective hair treatments and you are hungry to try something that actually works, give Vegamore a try like we did. Vegamore can transform your hair. Their clean and vegan approach for, to hair health uses smart botanicals that promotes visibly thicker, fuller and longer looking hair with help from vegamore you can get healthy beautiful looking hair without the harmful chemicals all their products are cruelty free and they never contain potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair health the grow revitalizing shampoo and conditioner kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and it improves hair from the root just massage the shampoo into your scalp 
for 60 seconds and then follow up with con the conditioner on the lengths and the ends. It's as simple as that. I've been loving the dry shampoo. I know you are you love the shampoo and conditioner. I use the shampoo and conditioner because uh, once I started my clean journey, I found out that the shampoo and conditioner that I like uh, has some things that I should not be using right now. So I switched to Vegamore and they are clean hair care and I love the shampoo, shampoo and conditioner and it's made the change extremely seamless for me. Like no one said anything like lesser about my hair. If anything, mm -hmm. they're saying it just looks amazing and I just feel so healthy using clean products. So Vegamore has no risk when you're trying it because they have a 90 day money back guarantee. But with 91% of customers saying that they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you won't want to run out. Give your hair exactly what it's been craving with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash toast and use code toast to save 20% on your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash toast. Code toast to save 20% at vegamore.com slash toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Just Thrive. Let's face it, stress sucks, especially when it seems to run your life, keeping you on edge and refusing to let you relax or unwind. But here's the good news. There is now a way to beat stress before it beats up on you. Just Thrive, Probiotic, and Just Calm are here to help you reclaim your health, your happiness, and your peace of mind. Because Just Thrive's breakthrough formula for probiotics is clinically proven to balance your gut, which is huge because as much as 90% of Americans have an overall overgrowth of bad bacteria in their gut, and studies show that an unhealthy gut can lead to an increase in stress hormones. Not only will Just Thrive probiotic help you stay ahead of things like gas, bloat, and constipation, when your gut is balanced and healthy, you'll be able to handle stress like a boss. Plus, Just Thrive probiotic has zero fillers, gluten, dairy, or histamines, and it can be sprinkled into any food or drink. It is a perfect probiotic for your whole family. Plus, Just Thrive is now introducing the next level stress-busting mood support just calm there's big buzz around just calm maybe you've already heard it mentioned by your favorite wellness influencers or podcasts because this product is scientifically proven to soothe everyday stress encourage a steady and balanced mood improve overall alertness and focus and even help you get better sleep up your wellness game and beat the bloat beat the digestive issues the stress and more with just thrive and right now when you go to just thrive use promo code toast you'll get 20 percent off a 90-day bottle of just thrive probiotic and just calm it's like getting a month for free while you're there check out their other research-backed products for optimal gut and immune health again that's promo code toast for 20 percent off a 90-day bottle of just thrive probiotic and just calm at just thrive health.com all right, Dear Toasters, for those who want to submit for next time, it's deartoasters at gmail.com. I already gave you guys like a little bit of a a sneak peek before, but I got I got two more. Ready? Okay. Hey, Jack Slusher, Bryce and Strice. Oh, First I miss off, those boys. Terribly. Love the pod. You guys are doing the Lord's work. Oh. I'm in need of a little help. In December, my husband and I moved 2,000 miles across the country to a new city where we literally knew nobody. It was the best decision of my life. However, my husband still has no friends it's been really for i've been really fortunate to meet a few other women through various facebook groups and stuff but he has nobody i'm starting to get exhausted being the only one he knows in the area every time i bring it up he says it's different for guys and that he's just going to join an intramural sports team in march but he definitely seems timid he hasn't made much of an effort to meet anyone and i'm growing concerned should i be worried how do i tell him he needs friends besides me without making him feel like a loser for the record he has always been a quiet guy but i'm still just kind of over being the only person he has a relationship with outside of work please send my husband a friend love a toaster who wants an evening to herself without her husband That's i feel tough. that i feel like sometimes you know the man is more social sometimes both are very social but a lot of times like it's the women who are making friends and I just wonder if like those friends that you've made through Facebook groups and have just husbands. like, like, do they have husbands? Couples yeah. dinner, double dates, like that's a really easy way to get him out there. But it also just sounds like having a social life like isn't very important to him. But I do think having a social life is important to having like a balanced it's life. life. Yeah. And even if it's just like one friend that he makes, like one person that he finds that he connects with, like that would be enough for him, Dainu. So I think unfortunately, like most things for us women, like, you're gonna we have, have to, do to everything. pick up the mantle and literally make husband, friends for your husband right and she wants to be proactive so honestly what Jackie said is the perfect call like odds are a lot of the women that you've met have partners and go out to dinner and like just hopefully you know one of them plays golf like yeah find or a one, common ground yeah where one of them like does video games or whatever your husband right. likes to do right it, all it takes is one intramural sports league actually sounds really good yeah since he is timid like sorry to give you more work but maybe you could go with him um, yeah. And just like make he sure needs he's a push. putting himself out there and not just saying he's going to do something. So unfortunately, it's more work for you. Yeah, no, of course. But she did write in like asking for things she could do. So I think she's open to like having to put this an another problem on her back. 
But I also think it's a situation where it's like you do the work now and the payoff means nights out for you going forward. Like yeah. that he has a friend and it could be years worth of payoff for a couple months worth of finding friends for your husband. But you know what? That's just life. Like you get out what you put in. Yeah. And this sounds like a worthy cause, especially since like you love where you live. He does need a And you love your friend. husband. You want him to, to have a life he outside needs, of you. He needs a friend to complain about you too. Right, no, that's called so healthy. living. It's so healthy. healthy. So yeah, uh, Jackie's right. Double date, perfection, perfection, perfect place to start. And then stay on top of him about like joining that intramural league and like, oh, I'll come with you. Hey, babe, like stay on top of that. But you also c- can do can do a lot with the double dates. Yeah, that's like easy, low hanging fruit and fun for you because you get to be with your galley. Right, everybody wins. <laughs> All right, final one. Dear Jackson Claude, Jax, congrats on baby number two. Claudia, Portugal looked like the trip of a lifetime. I write to you a desperate woman. My husband has recently become obsessed with baths. Long, long baths. For background, we have two kids, five years and four months old. We both work full time. His four job requires old. Yeah. That's His job re- requires him to be outside in the cold in the Utah winter. I work from home. Needless to say, we're both very busy people. Lately, my husband has been taking these long baths at the most inopportune times while I'm trying to cook dinner, put the kids to bed, etc. And to top it off, he always leaves the bathroom a mess and we only have one tub. He occupies it when the kids need their bath. No. We all need a little me time, but it feels like he's trying to skip out on chores and kid duty. How do I address this without sounding like a nagging, controlling wife? That is tough because that's like kind of, that's, that's like actually my mission in life, like how to communicate things without coming off as like a bitch wife. But sometimes like you just have to. And this is so clearly like him avoiding responsibility. Unacceptable. Honestly, cut the water supply in the house off. Like that's disgusting. No, this is so unacceptable. I'm sorry. There's no me time until the kids are all asleep. Yeah. Like the idea that he's luxuriating in the bath while you're cooking and trying to get the kids down. Like, no, no, no. And you know what? Like, it's it's the stereotype for a reason. Be a nagging bitch wife. Like someone needs oh to put God, this man in his place. So and you know what? True. If he doesn't listen to you, call his mother. Like this call cannot go on. Jackie, that's so true. It's a stereotype for a reason. Like we're always having yeah, to if be they've bitch wives. made it be true. Right. Like if you maybe if you actually like had a life that you cared about, <laughs> you would know what it's like. Yeah. No, like we but that's so true. It's a stereotype for a reason. Like you just blew my mind. Like, you don't do it because like I'm a nag. I don't nag you. I don't nag. I'm, like right. I'm not a naggy bitch in my regular life. I don't crave life. nagging. No, I wouldn't say like naggy is part of my personality. In fact, I'm quite the opposite. I will actually do as much as I physically can by myself yeah. in order to not ask for help. But like so still, true. I'm a nagging bitch wife. Oh my God. And guess so what? Right. It's, you know what? It's born out of necessity. And guess what? Charity Lou. I'm proud. What? <laughs> you know what? Same. Yeah. I'm a proud bitch naggy wife. Yeah. And to the point when like I say do something, you're going to fucking do it. Oh my God. I'm proud. Yeah. Proud. I think we need to turn this on its head. It's like, don't be ashamed to nag. We need to take our power back. Yeah. Oh, the house looks great and the kids are alive and well. It's because I'm a bitch naggy wife. (laughs) You're so right. Yeah. Oh, oh, you like this, this comforter? Yeah. I'm a bitch naggy wife. Yeah. Oh, oh, the kids made it to school today? Yeah, it's because I'm a bitch naggy wife. And that's the only way things are going to get done around here. By the way, I'm such a bitch naggy wife. And like, I don't even have kids. I'm going to get so much worse. It's crazy. Like, and you'd think like the the increase in bitch nagginess would result in an increase in Ben's productivity. And therefore, like the nagging would go down. No. But you have... As you're dealing with a special situation with Ben. Should we talk about the beans? We should, because people need to know what you are up against and why your naggy level is yes. so high, because his incompetence level is what you guys have never seen before in your lives. You guys, I had the experience of a <laughs> lifetime on Wednesday. I can't even put into words. Every time Ben does something like kind of gross or just like lazy, I'm always blown away. And here are some examples of things that, that are just like yes. standard Ben. Uses a knife because he cooks a lot, and which is really nice. Thank you for cooking. And puts the knife back in the wooden knife container mm-hmm. with food on it. So now yep. there's like yeah, food the that lives in the knife container. All the time. Uses half an avocado because that's what the recipe calls for. Leaves the other half of an avocado on the counter. Um, always. When he's staying at my house and and. Zach and I have gone on vacation and they're locking up the house after me. I came home and there was an avocado, avocado. on yeah. my counter. 
uh, toenail. To, I, toenail is extreme. Yeah. So every now These and then, like Ben will do something extreme. Extremes. So I'm making dinner the other night, and I go into my cabinet where I keep my canned goods, you know, beans and such for chili. <laughs> and I see this can of chili that's can not, of beans. Sorry, can of beans. Excuse me. That's not fully sealed. It's not open all the way, but like that, you know, the the soda can flicker thing has been like lifted a little and there's an opening in the can. I'm like, has this open can of beans been sitting out? Now, my, ne- my next mistake wasn't just like not throwing it out, but I had to see what was inside. And I was thinking of the last time Ben made chili, which I was talking about on the podcast. You were right so before. proud. I was so proud. Right before Ben went to LA. So what, what was that, a month ago? Uh, two weeks, two, three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks this open can Three weeks ago, you were romanticizing your life, and here's the price you have to pay. Three weeks ago, Ben opened a can of, of beans partially and left it in the cabinet. I should have just tossed it. Like, I knew it was going to be gross, but I did open it only because, like, if I had to experience it, so did Ben. When I tell you I opened up the can and I physically leapt backwards, I'd never seen mold like that in my face fucking life it was green it was yellow it was brown it was blue it was all the colors of a rainbow it I didn't even I didn't even know how to dispose of it but I did take some very high quality photos you know maybe I'll post them on my Instagram if you guys are interested just because like if I needed Ben to see it I needed then I was like how do I dispose of this I can't just toss it in the trash like that's disgusting it'll like spill out I put it in a Ziploc bag and then put the Ziploc bag in the trash and took the trash out it was so next level inhumane. That's what I'm living with. And that's, hi, I'm Claudia and I'm a bitch naggy wife. Because it's like, not only do you need to nag your husband, Ben, clean up the kitchen, Ben, do the dishes, Ben, put the beans away. That's ben. the level of minutia you need to get to or else things like this happen. Right, like I have to be so controlling in order just to stop a mold infestation in my home. I told you you should press charges against him for he emotional distress. He deserves to be arrested and to pay for his crimes. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, how do we make this man pay for what he did? I don't know. And like, oh, and by the way, he came home. And I didn't even, I didn't send the pictures. I wanted to see him in person. So when he came home, he came home late. He had a long day. He made himself a sandwich. He comes and sits on next to the bed. I'm like, oh, I want to show you something. And I, I'm like, do you know you left a can of beans open in the cabinet for a few weeks? He's like, I did. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah. And I had to dispose of it and I saw what was inside. And I showed him the pictures and he gets up. He's like, ew, don't show me that I'm eating. I'm like, you're eating. <laughs> I had to see it in fucking person, bitch. You're being sensitive. Ew, don't show me that. Can you believe? Like literally burns down the house. I don't want to see it. I don't oh want to see it. my god so that, sensitive what's so crazy about this crime is he knew he was leaving town the next day because i could see how in the world ben is like i use beans all the time i'll use them for my lunch tomorrow you should still put them in the fridge but yeah. maybe you could say he really thought he was about to use them again but he knew he was going out of town and he left them there like that in the pantry no and when we go out of town i do i have like a whole routine like take the trash out and literally we were leaving for lisbon and like i did my whole routine i clog i close all the drains like I do a million things I took the trash out as I'm leaving I find like a, a wrapper something plastic I go to put it in the trash in the kitchen there's an avocado sitting in there in the kitchen like in the kitchen in the kitchen trash I'm like I just took this out so that there was no smelly food that we come back a big smelly garbage I'm like why is there an avocado in here and he thinks I'm so crazy I'm like I know. I'm not crazy I know because it's like my bitch and Aggie wife yelled at me for throwing away an avocado that's how he tells it to his friends yep yep but it's yep. like after what you just heard I side with Dirty Lou. I stand with Dirty Lou. As we all should at all times. This is egregious. <sighs> so anyways, they made us this way. Yep. We are byproducts of our environment. And I will stop being a bitch nag when things get done without me asking. I will stop being a bitch nag when there are things that don't need to be nagged on. Yeah. It's so simple. So simple. Those were Dear Toasters. Again, that's deartoasters.gmail.com <sighs> for anyone that who wants to write in. I feel better. I actually do. Um, that's our show. There's another one tomorrow and the day after that. So we'll see you then. Thank you so much for listening to The Toast, The Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> 
just feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere. Podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, IR Radio, Castbox, all the places where you listen to podcasts. Find us at Toasty Five Star View, but I'm beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an incredible day. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Bye.